expectations are during the, we're going to be talking about what the expectations are during uh, the presentation and the training. We're going to be talking about what is at stake? What is our purpose of Lobby Day? What are we going to be uh, asking for? We're going to talk about what to expect during the day, what our experience will be like, and set expectations for how we should uh, act and what we might encounter. We're going to talk about sharing our story and why that matters and about how that's different perhaps than the way we typically share information with management and, and things like that. We're going to do some role play about a legislative conversation. What does that look like? How is that different than what we more normally might communicate with? Then we're going to talk about next steps. I just want to remind people that uh, we are changing the chat now, so if you need to ask questions, do that in the chat. Uh, I'm going to be focused on the presentation. I'm going to be focused on the preview of what my next slides are. Um, and we have Kathleen Cotter here with us who will be uh, helping out and um, letting me know when to pause so that we can answer questions. So send all of your questions in the chat and uh, we will work those into the presentation. Uh, we appreciate uh, everybody putting, uh, letting us know who they are, putting where they work, putting their region, uh, things like that. We're going to ask everybody to stay muted and keep your video on. That's not a super hard rule, obviously. We have common sense here, so. I'm not totally offended if something's muted, but I do need to see your faces to, the majority of you to know that my mic is still working and that you're hearing what I'm saying. Um, also, uh, messages in in um, in the chat if you have technical needs. So I will be here at the end of the presentation to uh, answer additional questions and get everybody ready for Thursday. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing my best to. Uh, Project my voice so you can hear me uh, clearly. But if you can't let Kathleen know and I can repeat some stuff, it is the end of the day. All right, political framing. What's at stake? What are we asking for? Why are we here? What is the meaning of it all? Uh, Lobby Day serves as several purposes. Um, the first, is talking about as a union, it's important part of that purpose is to protect our rights, protect our contract and stand up for the agencies we work in and serve and the people in Minnesota. We wanna be able to preserve the rights and resources that we have. And we wanna exercise our power to um, advocate for gaps uh, in those resources, gaps in those infrastructure, in that infrastructure. And we are going to be showing our power at the Capitol by demonstrating our ability to mobilize our members. We're going to be showing our power by meeting with the legislators and being able to tell our story. And that's incredibly uh, important. Additionally, internally, this activity is a way to build energy and build a th enthusiasm within our membership leading into uh, negotiations. So even people, even our fellow members who aren't here, uh, you know, they hear the stories, they hear, they see the pictures, it can build enthusiasm to participate in the next event. In fact, just to plug for the organizing council, the following week, April 1st, they do have a, a a membership event, Solidarity Saturday. So registration is still open for that. And we'd encourage you to participate in that because building membership, growing our membership, having solid membership numbers is also a way we demonstrate our power uh, leading into negotiations. So part of what we're going to be doing in demonstrating our power is advocating for our legislative priorities. 
both negotiations and the political council have met extensively with our members, met with our locals, met with our different agency meet and confer teams. And the message we have heard loud and clear is that our agencies need funding. Our agencies need staffing. And that needs to happen not only to help heal our members from, from uh, the inflation costs they've seen over the last couple of years, but to keep them safe in the workplace, to keep Minnesotans safe, and to keep the services that those Minnesotans rely on running and reliable. <laughs> and so we need to have that funding to be able to renew our state's commitment to serve our people. I work for Minnesota State. My department's half the size it was a few years ago. That puts a strain on our employees. That means our support departments are not able to be open when our students need them. It means we uh, are stretched thin when it comes to defending ourselves against cyber attacks and cyber uh, crime. And it means that our students are saddled with higher tuition costs. Every agency has their own version of that that we need to be advocating for and being able to tell that story of. Additionally, we want to strengthen PELRA. PELRA is the act that authorizes collective bargaining for state workers and, and, and things like that. It talks about how our contract can be uh, approved and our right to bargain. Um, we also want to modernize that contract approval process. Right now it's super archaic and it can be almost a year from the time where our members vote to approve a contract until the legislature grants final approval. That's ridiculous. Like there's no, there's no reason for that. It simply strings the employees along and it costs the taxpayer money when it comes time to implement that contract and we have to figure out back pay for all those people. We also have priorities that we're fighting for along with coalition partners that will make lives better, not just for our employees, but for all Minnesotans. Paid family and medical leave uh, will provide um, ways for all Minnesotans to have access to those types of leave. And it'll expand our own benefits uh, to match what the new statute says. Uh, things like driver's license for all and restore the vote have already passed at the Capitol and been signed into law. And as always, we want uh, to have the Equal Rights Amendment added to our state constitution so that issues of gender can be uh, enforced and investigated with the same vigor as those with race. All right. So here is the rough outline. We want to make you aware that there are two different options of what people can engage in based on what people's schedule is and, and where they're located. So at 11 a.m., we will have people gather at the Shoreview Community Center. Early documentation had MAPE offices, but we've had to upgrade due to popular demand. So I'm really excited about that. We will be able to meet in person with our team from our legislative districts to make sure that we have all the roles filled and things like that. We'll have food available for lunch. We'll review lost time and you'll be able to go through, we'll review how to fill that out and get that submitted. And we'll go through any details or reminders that people need to have a successful experience with their legislators. And then we're doing something new for MAPE. It's common, or some other unions do it, but we're going to be busing over to the Capitol as a group. I think this is a great opportunity to have solidarity and energy and enter the Capitol all in one group. I think that will be a powerful visual and I'm excited for that. Logistically, that'll mean that our 200 people won't have to find parking and find their way through the Capitol complex. And so there's a logistical purpose to that uh, as well. At 1.30, we will have the rally in the rotunda. Now, 
there are some people who work at the Capitol complex or who work on the east side of the metro or whose schedules aren't going to let them come to the Shoreview Community Center at 11 a.m. That's fine. Most people can meet us at the Capitol by one o'clock, uh, be in the rotunda. We'll have staff and members there to help guide you and get you situated and process your registration there as well. I will say though, that if you are meeting us directly at the Capitol, then you won't be getting the lunch that the people at Shoreview get. Mm -hmm. After the, the program will last about a half an hour, um, the program will include messages from various MAPE officers and Governor Walls and Speaker Ortman will also be there. So this is a chance to speak directly to them and make direct asks to them that, that we're looking forward to. Between 2 and 5 p.m., we'll be meeting with our legislators. Now, the slide says based on legislative ability, uh, availability. That's always the case, but this year more so. This year, there is a important legislative deadline the day after our lobby day. And so many legislators might be in and out of committees and those committees, like you might have an appointment and show up and your person might be pulled into a committee. So it's important to understand that we're going to be, have to be flexible. I also think it's important to understand that part of what builds power for this is not just having that meeting with the legislator, but showing the legislature showing MMB that we can mobilize our members and get from across the state and get together and be there and, and take an action. So the fact that you're there at all is part of that building power, building that energy, and that's important. Um, so I just wanna prepare people that if you come all this way and then you're like, my guy didn't even show, we understand that happens, it's unfortunate but that doesn't mean your trip was a waste. Um, so I just wanna get that out there. Also, having said that, it's super important if something comes up in last minute and you're not able to ma make it, to let us know right away so we can let the legislator know. One of the worst things we can do is to no show to a meeting where the legislator's like, where are those people? I made time for this. Unfortunately, the reverse isn't true, but, um, but we do need to let them know if something comes up and you're not able to attend. All right. So the board of directors has approved lost time and expenses. That includes um, travel time and making sure you're fed. So people who are coming from greater Minnesota, um, all the normal, reimbursement guidelines and policies are in effect for this day. Um, we'll review the specifics of filling out lost time and expense forms at the Shoreview Community Center, and, and I'll be available for questions um, some of the time at the Capitol as well. But if so, if you are um, need to take the full day then to get there by 11, then, then that's uh, what we're gonna need to do. Uh, most people, it'll just be a half, uh, half day. Uh, we'll go through the specifics of all that. Um, oh, good. Yeah. So we are. We are doing buses from the Shoreview Community Center, right, Leah? Yeah. So there may be a case where we have some extra people there and they might need to carpool. Um, some people have said they have other commitments in the evening and won't be able to stay till five or whatever. Like it, um, they'll need to drive over on their own. But I think that uh, the buses and the carpooling are going to be helpful. They're going to reduce our mileage costs. It'll make sure it's sometimes it's difficult to find parking at the Capitol, reduces emissions. And I think more than anything, 
it's helpful just to be with your fellow laborers, to be together back in a group for the first time in a while and, and being able to, uh, it'll be a lot easier to be dropped off on the stairs in front of the Capitol than to find your way through the tunnels. So um, I think that'll be good. If you do have to park at the Capitol, make sure you save your parking stub. That'll be required to get reimbursed for that uh, fee. So um, we're gonna, I just talked to um, Operations Director Todd Mackey and we're gonna do this a little bit differently. We are gonna have places for people to drop their mileage forms at the Shoreview Center and, and at the Capitol. We're also going to ask you to take a picture uh, in case that form gets lost, but we learned that the main business process would require all those forms to be reprinted by our staff, and we want to avoid that. So um, I just learned this on Friday where that, um, like if you forget that and you still submit it to that email address, that'll work too. Um, and the bottom line is, if everybody can get them in on Thursday, then you'll get paid sooner too. But we'll have places to drop them off at both the Capitol and the, the community center in paper, and that'll make it easier on our business operations staff. All right, so as I mentioned before, we're going to need to be flexible. Some people may not have one scheduled because their legislator knows that they're not going to be available. Some legislators are against what we stand for and don't want to meet with us. So not everybody will have a meeting, so we'll be, need to be flexible. Some might have one that's scheduled and their legislator might get pulled into a committee meeting. We just have to know that that's the case and be okay with that. When we get into the meeting, um, we have learned that if we divide into roles, that can make the meeting more efficient. And so we're going to provide time at the, at the Shoreview Community Center for people to work with their people in their district to go that. And then remind me, Leah, we're also sending out a list to each district to let people know who's in their group, correct? Correct. Those should be on their way tomorrow. Yeah, so look in your email tomorrow. You should get a list of who will be in your delegation for your legislative districts. Uh, reach out to each other. You can start to figure these roles out ahead of time. Uh, if you are in a district with not four people, we have volunteers from MAPE um, committees and other MAPE members who will join you to reinforce and, 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 and make sure you are not there on your own and you have a full delegation. So let me talk through the roles really quickly. The facilitator introduces the group and ensures the meeting stays on track and that all the right questions get asked. This can be especially important. Your meetings will generally only be about 15 minutes. There will be some legislators who like to talk and that will uh, take up all the space. So it's helpful for the facilitators to, to, to keep things on track and keep things, uh, keep things moving. Uh, the storyteller plays an important role. Uh, so many members I talk to are used to writing reports and writing uh, position papers that are well thought out and full of data and are helpful in making data-driven de decisions. This is the storyteller's role is to take that data and add an emotional connection to it to help the legislator understand the importance of why we're asking for what we're asking and why that's important. Um, and that's that hook that, that that will help them uh, want to support uh, what we're looking for. The question asker is important because they, just like the facilitator, make sure the meeting keeps on track. The question asker is the one who helps nail down that specific question. 
we'll have a specific ask when we go into these these meetings and and the question asker make sure that that get a that question gets asked in a direct way and finally the note taker it's helpful for our MAPE staff and for our MAPE political council to get notes on what the response is, key things that the legislator says so we can map out um, what their stance on the issues are. And that can help us know where we need to put our efforts uh, to follow up. Maybe we're, maybe a lobbyist talks to them, maybe we reach out to the members and they write some additional letters, things like that. But it also is helpful for the members to remember what was said. So if they need to follow up and say, hey, this bill, Senate file, whatever is coming up and it funds corrections. And you said uh, when we met with you that you would vote for this. And we just want to thank you for that and express our confidence that you'll follow through and keep that commitment. Um, so they're helpful for a lot of different reasons. So let's talk about introductions and the facilitator. They do a really brief summary of why we're here. Um, legislators meet with a lot of people. You can't assume that just because they see a name on their schedule and that they're letting you in that they're going to remember who you are. You might have a relationship with that legislator, either from work you're doing in the community or the campaign trail. But a lot of times they'll be like, who are you and why, why are you here? And they might say it more politely than that or not, but the facilitator is there to let them know really quickly. And, you know, thank you for meeting with us here. We're talking about the important work we're doing as state employees. Um, this example says our contract, but when we're meeting on Thursday, we're gonna talk about funding for our agency and why that's important and why we're not bloated and as an agency and why that funding's important. And say your name, agency, job, you may or may not share any leadership roles you're having in May, but that's good to, to, to share if you want. Um, but as long as you're keeping it brief, uh, Kathleen Cotter has a good example of talking about what she does um, in a concise way. And that's what we need to, to practice too, being able to uh, share what you do and why that's important and, and do it in just a few moments. You can go to the next slide. So when we get into what we share and why that's important, it's, it's good to practice that ahead of time. It's good to have a, a story that um, really illustrates what the need is for, for the ask. When I talk about my story and I'm talking about agency funding, I talk about how uh, we're, we don't have money to rehire for people who leave. And so our department is small. I talk about how our employees aren't paid competitive wages compared to private sector. We just lost the top guy on my team uh, last fall. He went to a private sector job. Uh, he got a $50,000 raise and he's permanent work from home, which is what he wasn't able to get uh, working for the state. And so share your stories, share your, share your thoughts, keep them brief, keep them concise. And as a facilitator, you'll know ahead of time who your storytellers are and you'll be able to pass it off to them. And who your story matters. This is your chance to tie it into to why that's important for the state. What you do for the state is important. And it's important to have that reasoning uh, set up for when you ask the legislator to support you. Excuse me just a minute. John, would you like me to tell my story real quick? OK. Uh, yeah. So good afternoon, Senator. <clears throat> Jones. Uh, my name is Kathleen Cotter. I work for the Department of Human Services in the Child Support Division. Uh, we in Child Support collect and disperse $50 million a month. $600 million a year comes in and goes out exactly the way it's supposed to. And that's not a story you're ever going to see on the front page of the strip because it's not sexy. Uh, 
uh, I like to think that if I do my job well, there's a kid out there that has a bike that they wouldn't have had otherwise. And that's why what I do is important. Thanks, Kathleen. So she hit on all the major points. She hit on why people might not be aware specifically of what she does, what it looks like when she is doing her job well, and why that's an important service to uh, the state of Minnesota and the people of, of Minnesota. And so that's what we're looking for uh, in our stories. Once we get through the stories, we want to make the ask of the of the legislator. And for us this year, we're asking that our agencies be fully funded so that they can have the resources to do what they need to do and they can be fully staffed uh, to do that right. And so we're asking uh, this specific thing. Make members step up for Minnesota every day. Will you step up and support our members by voting to fully fund government agencies and keeping state workers in mind when considering any cuts to revenue? You could get a wide variety of responses to this and that's okay. But what we wanna emphasize is it's not our job to debate them. We just wanna focus on why that's important to us because that's not debatable. Whether or not we have people to, to do the job and why that's important is what we're sharing with them. The other thing to remember is that legislators don't like to say yes or no in many cases. And so we're going to talk about uh, how to interpret their answer and, and and practice that a little bit. Um, before we go to the next slide though, I just wanna remember one thing. You might get asked like, well, what bill do you want? What bill is that funding in? It's complicated for us this year because there's not like a specific line item per agency. Even my own agency, Minnesota State, has funding that comes from at least three different pots. And it's not our job to know that. So don't get into the details. Say we can refer that to our lobbyist team and, and they'll help you know the specific bill uh, that comes to that. But what we're looking for is a more general commitment to make sure that our agencies are fully funded so that our employees are fairly compensated and that our agencies are fully staffed so that Minnesotans get the uh, services they deserve. All right, let's talk about the slippery answers. It can be like a code sometimes, and it gets more complicated in Minnesota when we're not used to saying yes or no directly. So there's many ways that they can go about it. You're going to have some legislators like Jamie Becker Finn or Tina Liebling who are going to be like, hell yes, we're going to vote to fully fund these agencies. And that's going to be easy. Then you're gonna have wafflers like Senator Carla Nelson and others who are like, well, I support these, but I think this is too costly, so we're gonna to need to cut. They're just trying to have it both ways. They don't wanna appear mean or like they're against you, but they totally are. Then you're gonna have those that don't care about being mean or don't care about being adversarial um, who are gonna just call it like they see it. So just understand they're not attacking you. They're, this is their ideology, they're, they're mapping out and they're gonna be like, Governor Walls is out of control, we need to give this money back to the voters. And just take that, just be okay with having a no, that helps us know too. And let me just say this too, not all no's are the same and not all opposition is the same. And these, even if the Senator or, House member is not generally ideologically supportive by drawing this personal connection and that the services that you're providing in that district, it could move them from someone who's offering amendments that completely undermine what's going on to just voting no and being silent on it. And that is useful too. The last one we run into is probably the most Minnesotan in my opinion. And you'll, I've heard this a lot. They'll say, I haven't read the specifics, but I plan on unvoting with my caucus. 
Now, you actually might get the, I haven't read the specifics from someone who's generally a labor supportive too, and that's fine. But again, we're not talking about one specific bill this time. This is gonna be omnibus uh, funding bills. We're speaking in general, um, we're asking for a general uh, support to a principal. All right, let's do some role play. I will play the role of the legislator. So we're going to um, focus on a I don't know or no, so that we can uh, practice what that's all about and also practice making the ask. So I am going to ask for a volunteer from the crowd to be our intrepid question asker in this delegation. And let me know when you have someone, Leah. I'm scanning through to see someone with a raised hand or someone who just wants to come off mute. Otherwise, we'll call on someone. <laughs> I'll do it. I forget where my chat and chat is, but thanks, Meredith. Let me get back to where I can like see people. Okay. So, Senator Ferreira. Wait, no, am I talking to Leah or John? You're talking to me. Okay. And uh, sure I'll be a senator, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Senator, Senator Ferreira, will you support MAPE's priorities for this legislative session and help make sure that state workers provide the best services to the state of Minnesota we can? Well, I think it's important to, to offer these services and, and to make sure that they're handled and, and funded in a, in a, in a frugal and, and responsible way. Uh, can you tell me more about um, what you're looking for? Is there a specific uh, so, bill that this is we in? We want to make sure our agencies are completely and fully funded. I get concerned when um, you say things like frugal, because frugal leads to situations where in my unit, we've lost, we've had, uh, seven people leave over the last four and a half years um, and in a group that's only seven people big and that's because we're making less like we we aren't making enough money the state of minnesota's own numbers say that chemists are typically paid over 30 dollars an hour whereas a chemist one at the state of minnesota starts at twenty-one dollars or something and the same position at the met council makes twenty nine dollars an hour Oh, wow, that's quite the gap. Well, I think it's important that we retain our people and, and retain our expertise. On I that. completely agree. And like when we retain people, we're able to provide the best services. But in order to retain people, we need wages that catch up and stay up with inflation. And we don't have that right now. All right. Well, um, yeah, I guess. Uh, I'll make sure that um, I look for that and, and tell me again what bill that was. Um, I'm not sure. I can refer you to um, MAPE's legislative people. Uh, it's a number of bills because each agency has its own bill. I work in ag, um, but like you have to, it, we need funding, proper funding for all state agencies. And that spans a number of bills. Sure, sure. Obviously, yeah. All right. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your time, Senator Ferreira. <laughs> nice. That was great. Thank you, Meredith. All right. So was my response a yes, a no, a maybe? Let us know in the uh, through your reactions.
you're getting lots of, lots of thumbs up. You were appropriately wishy-washy. <laughs> <laughs> My goal was to be completely indecisive so that you weren't really sure. Um, so you'll hear things, and, and Meredith was really good when she picked up on the word frugal. That's often a code word for cutting. So well done for that one. Um, oftentimes asking the specific bill is also a way to distract and like lead the discussion away. So you did an excellent job in, in redirecting that to the legislative affairs. And your, your example was outstanding that, mm -hmm. You know, when you're able to say, anytime you're able to show that the state pays less than market value, then that's really hard to refute. Like the, the, the and that does an excellent job of fighting that narrative that state employees are overpaid and underworked. Because even the, <laughs> even those who are against labor and want to starve government, their rhetoric is all based around, well, we should pay, we we'll gladly pay market wages for our employers. <laughs> um, one of my favorite SER hearings was, I don't know, it was several years ago when we were talking about uh, what it costs to pay uh, contract nurses for one of our facilities. And they're like, well, why don't you just pay the regular nurses that? And everybody in the crowd just stood up and cheered and it stopped the hearing for a while. We're like, now you get it. Yeah, uh, that wasn't the point she was trying to make, but even a broken <laughs> clock is right twice a day. So well done on that. Uh, I will say it's really illuminating if anybody wants to look up their job title on the Minnesota Deed website. That's where I've been pushing higher wages for a while. And it's really fun to see what the state's own data says is the average rate for your job title. It's very illuminating. <laughs> Their, use their own data against them. That's go. right. All right. So one thing, if it was a hard no, one of, some of the keywords that you can look for is uh, specifically hear them say like, I'm going to vote with my caucus. I'm going to vote with what my committee chair says. Those are things that let us know that that's their way of saying no without saying no. All right. So one of the effective ways to wrap this up, and this will be the, um, the do we have the questioner or the facilitator? It's the facilitator who wraps up. Facilitator, yeah. Yeah. So this will be the facilitator role. You're going to repeat back uh, what you talked about, what you agreed upon. Uh, you always want to be gracious. And, and thank them for their time. Many uh, legislators will offer to take a picture with your group or just assume that you want to do it. Um, if they don't and you want one, go ahead and ask for it, it's great. If you do take a picture, send it to the comms team. Um, or if the legislator has their staff member do it, have them send it to you as well. But we want to um, thank them. We want to repeat what the ask is. So thank you for planning on fully funding Minnesota agencies. Thank you for listening to us. Let them know you're going to follow up and we'll work with you to know like when do, when do we need to uh, reach out and, and make sure that they keep their commitment. Because one of the main purposes of this is to make sure that the money is allocated so our negotiate it's there for our negotiations team. One of the strategies MMB does is if they know that the legislature has only allocated enough money for a two, a two and a half percent COLA, then they'll be like, well, that's all the money the legislator said. We can't go any higher. And so we're trying to get ahead of that. We're trying to make sure the funds are there for something that's fair, something that's reasonable, something that uh, makes sure our members are taken care of. It's important to debrief with your delegation afterwards. Um, people will have different takes on how things went. Um, and so it's important to, to share with each other and share your impressions. You might have one person who thinks it went great and you might have another member in your delegation who thinks that 
it didn't go well, talk that out, find out why it went that way. Um, talk about how it felt talking to uh, hearing the stories and what follow up that you need to do, especially if they're wishy washy or on the fence or didn't seem to really understand what you you were talking about. Um, but I have found that for me, these meetings are energizing. It helped demystify and, and, and know that my legislator was just a regular person. Uh, it helped me realize they are not some sort of special high intelligence that so, so I should be not intimidated by telling my story. And it also inspired me to become more active politically because frankly, the one I talked to was a liar and full of crap. So, um, those are technical political terms John is using. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna learn all about crap at college. So anyway, so, um, and you'll also, when you're debriefing, making sure that the people on your team know what they need to do to follow up with their legislator. Um, or maybe you wanna say thank you and share an additional story. But again, keep those brief, follow the same guidelines as when you are in the room. All right, let's review some tips. Don't let them get away without answering. Like they're there at the Capitol to represent you. Um, if they wanna go on um, and, and drone on about whatever, like redirect them, say, hey, I think it's great that you are at that groundbreaking in my district. And then, but we need an answer on this legislation, go forward. Um, and it's perfectly appropriate, like more than appropriate, like you really should ask for a direct yes or no answer. If they continue to be squirmy about it, like don't make it awkward, but at least get it out there a bit. And one of the things that's great, excuse me, about uh, state and local government is democracy is still in play here. And a small group of dedicated people can make a difference, can change a mind, can change a vote. And these legislators listen to their constituency. If they get five, 10, 15 people saying, this issue is important to me and I want you to vote this way, they listen. And so that's where, where you can, can make a difference. Um, even if you are not the note taker, it's important to keep a record of what happened. And that can be useful in following up with the legislator. That can be useful for um, making sure uh, just you remember what your interaction was the next time around. But it's important to keep those notes so when it gets time for those votes, you can compare them. One thing I will say, and this is to the trickiness, is you will have legislators who will vote for our contract or who will vote for our agency when it gets to that final bill on the floor. But in the five procedural votes leading up to that, to let it get to the floor, to approve the funding for it, they're voting against it. And that's not something most members see or pay attention to. You have to kind of dig down and get to that. Um, but if you're paying attention, it can be really helpful to share with the other members who are in your district who are like, oh, well, all the senators voted for our contract last time. I guess they are supporting labor rights. Well, no, they also voted to not fund any of those agencies or not fund it ahead of time. So we wanna make sure people have an accurate uh, representation of what their legislators are doing all up and down the line through the process. This is important because there will be people who do this, who will not have meetings or if your meeting gets canceled. Write them or email them. You can get that, well, we have that information in the packet. Yeah, their contact information will be in the packet. Tell them who you are, what you do, why you wanted to come see them that day. Again, follow follow the same format that you would if you were in person. Give them that um, that short story, that short reason. Give them make that direct ask. They will likely respond to you. Um, 
take a picture with your group, attach that to the email, get yourself a selfie on the rotunda, get yourself a selfie in front of their office while they're at the committee meeting. Actually, I don't know if that's allowed, but you don't know. If, if you don't have an appointment, you can still stop in and, and talk to their legislative assistant for five minutes. And oh, let that's them know. an excellent tip, yeah. yeah. Here, here's who you missed. <laughs> yeah, and let me add this. Those are some of the most important people at the Capitol. Like you must um, absolutely be respectful and polite with them. If even if things go poorly in your meeting, don't come out and trash talk the legislator. Like the assistants are what make everything run. They are the glue that holds it together, the grease that keeps the wheels moving. The outside of just no showing to your appointment, being polite and and gracious with the, the legislative assistance is, is absolutely essential. But go ahead and send your emails. Everybody in your, have everybody in your delegation send their own individual one. Talk to your coworkers, say, hey, we just all emailed them. If you're in my district, send one too. And then also, of course, you can send the pictures you take at the Capitol to, to Leah at lsolo at make.org. Are there any questions? Remember, if you have a question, put it in the chat for Kathleen. At this moment, there are no questions. So apparently, John, you were just fabulous and everybody is, is completely prepared. A couple folks have, have um, messaged me. Oh, I've, okay, here's one. Uh, and this one came up the other two meetings. What is the dress code? Um, business, business casual yeah. and where's, if you have MAPE gear, wear MAPE gear. Mr. Kata has a question. Brian? Oh, no, I was just saying John did a good job. Oh, thanks, okay. Brian. <laughs> uh, Leah, what questions do you have? Um, I also have, can we submit W4s uh, Thursday as well? And is social, uh, is social media, personal social media encouraged? Do we have a hashtag? That's a great question. Leah, do we have a hashtag? Uh, we will. Okay. Um, I, it, it will, it will probably, it will probably be the Minledge plus um, a MAPE one. Um, Let's see. Um, we also have a clarification on dress code. Does that mean jeans or no jeans? Um, I believe I have seen plenty of people in jeans at the Capitol. This is Minnesota where we just <laughs> blue jeans to black tie. That's kind of kind of what you'll see um, at the Capitol. So I will um, be wearing blue jeans. It will not be ripped. That is, yes. Uh, also, blue jeans, there, but nice blue jeans. Nice blue jeans. Nice ones. There will also be swag at the at the rotunda and at uh, Shoreview. So, if you don't have anything that says Mape on it today on Thursday, you will. We got. Is it taboo um, in this case to talk about other legislative things we've pushed um, at? our legislator um, to vote on, like single payer health care. I think that if it's under the umbrella of the MAPE legislative platform, it's fine to talk about those things. If it's not on the MAPE platform, then I would ask that you reach out separately to do that. And so, you could find the MAPE legislative priorities on the website under the political council tab. Yeah. So if you have strong feelings, for example, about firearm legislation, that is not under the umbrella of the MAPE um, political platform. And we would ask that you uh, would address that separately. Uh, ask for a clarification on what to focus on for your story. Um, the usual or the high stress of the pandemic or you know, another example. I think any way that you can show the lack of funding is hurting everyday Minnesotans is the way to do that. Mm -hmm. 
So if you can, if you can have a story that demonstrates that, that will have uh, the most impact. Because in addition to drawing it just to all Minnesotans, like it's important to show that our goals are for the common good. We're not, right? Like, even if your story is like Meredith, where you're talking about pay gaps, that turnover and not having a staffed agency that provides a critical service, that's impacting everyday Minnesotans. And that's ultimately what we're trying to, to do. And it helps fight that narrative again that we're just leeching off the taxpayer. Uh, can I make two very quick points? Yeah, go ahead. Um, the first is there will be some legislators who will refer to the taxpayers as though those of us who work for the state don't pay taxes. Um, feel free to remind them that that is not a benefit of working for the state. We still have to pay state taxes. Um, and the other thing is to the extent that you can throw in an anecdote, that's what people remember. We're hardwired to be storytellers. Those are the things they will use on the floor when they're trying to convince their colleagues. So as an example, how many people here can, can repeat back the statistics that I rattled off? How many people remember I talked about a kid getting a bike? It's, it's just stories are what, what are memorable. So. Last question that I have received so far, will we be outside all day? We will be walking from the buses into the building. Yeah. We will not be rallying on the Capitol. We will not have any events that are outside. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'll just I'll add if you're if you're not taking the bus, if you're parking somewhere on the Capitol complex, I'd say you average two to three blocks of walking to get inside. Um, and then there are there are tunnels, um, but those tunnels do um, shut down around four thirty. Um, so so you know you might add add on you know some outside another couple blocks walking outside. The sidewalks are fairly well. Um, they're doing they're doing a really good job of trying to keep up with the snow and the sleet and the ice. It'll be in the forties all week. It'll just be wet. Um, I have a final uh, one last question. Is there a payroll code to, code to enter and self-service for the day? Um, you can do one of two things. You can take vacation and double dip. You can get paid by the state and paid by MAPE for the same time, or you can take unpaid time. And that is a special code, which I don't, I think it's ULV, but I don't know off the top of my head for sure. I'm pretty sure the code is UNL. That could be, yeah, because ULV might be um, for board members. And unpaid time does have complications. It reduces your vacation accumulation, for example. If you, sorry, I just know this because I like copied my notes over after emailing people today um, about it. UNL won't reduce your sick. It's unpaid by the state, but paid by MAPE, and it won't reduce your sick. It acts like vacation or sick time. It doesn't reduce your... Um, accrual of of time is my understanding after checking with someone in my local okay what is because my manager brought up the same ish concern um because she hadn't had anyone in her group do um lobby day before and so i asked about it um so there's a question about minute pushing back on the use of unl and my understanding is we are sending letters to mmb for everybody who's registered for lobby day is that am i is that accurate leah yes um, so you, so getting, now that I have a complete list, we'll send it. <laughs> yeah. So at that point, it's not up to your supervisor unless they're, you're doing something that cannot be replaced at that time. <laughs> I've I've rendered Leah speechless, which may not be good. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, so apparently HR is the is who is pushing back on uh, UNL. But again, if you've got a letter that from MAPE to MMB, you're authorized to take the time off. 
All right, we've got one more one more question. Um, uh, being extremely COVID cautious, um, are there things outside the rotunda um, for folks to do um, during the rally? Um, that is, I, I honestly haven't. I haven't heard that. Um, so, uh, um, I, you know, there's there is a lot of space. So you would be able to, for instance, kind of like go away from the crowd a little bit. You could be up on the second floor. We're going to have people up in the balcony where there's still people, but it's a, it'll be a little bit more spread out. Um, those are kind of the things that come, um, come to mind. Um, it also is very common for folks to to be still wearing masks around the Capitol. It's not it's certainly not the majority, but, you know, lots of people are are there um, wearing masks. Um, so those are those are the, the first things that come to mind. Um, yeah. All right, but I think. I think that's I think that's mostly it. Uh, right at six thirty. Good job. Right at, <laughs> here we go. Did we do it? Did we do it? All right. Um. Well, you all know where to find us. Um. If if uh you know send an email, um or or give us a call or a text if you've got any more questions. Um, we're around and super excited to see you all in just a couple days. Yay. John, do you, any, yeah. <laughs> uh, John, did you have anything to close us out? Um, I don't think so. I had to step away really quick. My door wasn't closed properly and someone came in for help and I had to go send them away. <laughs> Um, because your your unit is underfunded, <laughs> you can't help them right now. <laughs> that's right. So I don't have anything to add. I appreciate everybody showing up today. Um, 